We keep being told that we need a long-term funding solution for adult social care. And there's another warning today about the costs of not sorting it out. It's the impact on unpaid carers of our reliance on them. And it comes from the Local Government Association, which represents councils in England and Wales, who say the health and the well-being of many carers is under huge pressure. Carers like Jackie Harrison, who looks after her brother Mark, who has Huntington's disease. Before we talk to her, let's just hear uh, the two of them together. Have a Help driving you. What kind of things to? Yeah, go out with ice cream. We'll go out for an ice cream. Yeah. I should go to the doctor appointment. Doctor appointment, dentist. Yeah. yeah. What about at home? What kind of things? Yeah, I'll show make all my food. Shall we make all your food? Yeah. yeah. Work it out then. Jackie Harrison and Mark. And Jackie Harrison's in our radio car now. Good morning to you. Morning. And the first obvious thing hearing you within there is you're his translator, really, aren't you? You're, you're, you're his, his, his eyes and ears to the outside world. Um, yeah, sadly I am now. Um, unbelie- well, unbelievably, when you listen to that, he's got two degrees, a degree in English from Leeds and a degree in history from um, Huddersfield. So a very bright young man, 46. But now he's struggling to do pretty much everything. Huntington's robs you of your sort of ability to talk and walk and speak and think. And the speech is really, really trying to go. So as as, as well as doing everything on a day-to-day basis, it is very much... I'm I'm becoming one of the only ones who's sort of able to to pick up on what he's saying. So how many hours a day do you spend with him? Um, 24-7 he lives with me full time. So um, with it being a genetic disease, mum died of it when um, I was 12 and he was six and I became his full time guardian when I was 18 and he was 12. And he's been kind of on and off um, not well, probably all of his adult life. Looking back, it possibly has sort of been the Huntington sort of manifesting very slowly. And then the movement disorder came on about sort of visibly, maybe 15, 16 years ago. And I've been caring up 24 7 probably about the last eight or nine years. Did you, when you started off, did, did you sense that it would get to this? Um, yeah, I think so, because with it being a genetic disease, I'd seen it. I'd seen it before, so my grandmother was at home. She'd lost her husband with it and then watched um, both her son and daughter die from it. So you, you've got that sort of history with it. At that time, they were they were, actually spent the last few months in the local, what was lunatic asylum, stores all in Huddersfield. Mm. Um, but but did, that did, level of care has always been Did you think, needed. though, that, that, that with that level of care, that you would get more help as, as, as it progressed? Uh, possibly, I uh, think. I think yeah um it it's getting a lot more difficult <clears throat> now because it's it's quite a physical thing is washing him and toileting him and doing all these quite personal things is quite a difficult thing to do for your brother but with it being such a complex disease the care that is available isn't always understanding of the condition so we had a breakdown in with care and and somebody um came a while ago and really thought it was a matter of just taking him for a coffee um, but to actually get to, get him to the point of taking him outside somebody's got to run around do the washing give him his breakfast which can take an hour and a half clean him up change him get him sorted for the day so the the sort of running around two hours before would be up to up to me so it's not really even giving you any sort of a break what's it done to your I mean, hope of a family life of, of, of any kind of ordinary life I, 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 you don't have an ordinary life with that I think um, the disease and then caring for the disease within a family I, there's three of us in, in the house my brother and my partner um, so with my partner when I can't remember the last time we went out for a coffee together holidays and things um, are non-existent and um, so you become institutionalised and I think caring and I don't think it's particular to Huntington's disease I think it's caring per se because it's going on behind closed doors in people's houses there's very little 
awareness of, of the isolation and the, and the kind of problems that people are facing. I think if we were out on the street and homeless or something and it's in people's face and you were tripping up over us as you went to get your morning coffee, you're very, very vis- visible. But I think caring, so much of it is in, in going on behind closed doors and people have mm. given up a lot, careers, pensions... Um, it's a massive economic impact on families as well. And it is, I mean, it, it, the, 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 the mental stress, quite apart from the physical side of it and the fact that you're coping with your brother and all, all the rest of it, that, that, that mental side of it must just, well, sometimes bring you to the point of desperation. <laughs> yeah, it does, yeah. And, 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 and even at that point of desperation, and, and sometimes think people just say, oh, well, I think you need some help, and that's the last you you hear because I don't think either the system's not set up to help or they don't they don't know what to do and you you become you're very dependent like my partner so you can't, you can't do anything without it being dependent on somebody else so even healthcare appointments like they've talked about because it's it's a genetic disease that has affected me a lifetime I'm trying to get some kind of psychology but merely to get to the appointment involves so much organizing and how somebody has to be at home and I have to organize this it's 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 very very difficult so things go on the back burner and you just get in your daily routine and get through through the day till well not nine till five because it isn't mm. it's 12 till um it's 24 hours really well jackie thank you so much for taking the time to to talk to us and it is of course so much more effective to hear from someone who actually does it rather than the simple report from the local government association but it is worth them um, finishing by saying that they are saying that there is rising demand increasing costs and that there is huge pressure on families and there's certainly obviously pressure on you jackie harrison uh, thank you thank you